What up, Trek peeps? It's Grow in the House. It's a fun one, all right? Got a request of the fish fry. Staple of Wisconsin. It's gonna be awesome, right? Started out with Lent, something as a meat base to fill in for Fridays. Church kind of got it going. Prohibition kicked it off, right? Just knocked it out of the park. Tavern started using it to get people in the door. Drink beers under the table, that kind of jazz. Um, so it's kind of just a staple from Wisconsin. I remember when I moved here from Wisconsin and actually started a restaurant, I didn't even have fish fry on the menu for a while and it got pretty much almost booted out of town. So we're doing fish fry. It's going to be awesome. Straight up, like, you can't get better than Drake's. PBR, batter, we got center cut cod. We're going to make our own tartar sauce. We're going to do a, a, a coleslaw with like a citrus vinaigrette spin on it. We're gonna go all out, man. The tartar sauce is gonna be off the chains. We're gonna do a little bit of a spin, okay? Cause I got off track slightly with the whole health thing. I apologize. I've been getting some naughty requests. People are at home, they want some comfort too. I get it. So let's do this. We're gonna do like a, a naughty and nice, okay? So we got the, the naughty kind of fish fry. It's got a kind of jim jam on it. Um, and then we got the nice kind of, we're gonna do a, a, a pan seared tilapia. A little bit of a Cajun cornmeal encrusted, not fried, something lightly hit on the pan. Um, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. We got some Yukon Golds boiling up. We're gonna smash them suckers down, olive oil them up, a little bit of herbs, slap those in the oven. Um, we're gonna do, like I said, the, the, the non-mayo based slaw. So we're kind of just gonna do a little bit healthier spin. We're gonna try to make these awesome and fill in the requests, but also kind of do the healthier squirrel spin on it. All right, it's gonna be really fun. This one, we're gonna do cast iron fry for the fish fry. And we're just gonna do a nice light, light sand pan sear on those other suckers. We're gonna dive right into this one. We're gonna start out with swagging on some coleslaw. coleslaw cool trick here, all right? You guys saw the knife skills and all my other ones. We're kind of talking about flat surfaces. We're talking about flat surfaces all the time and we're cutting. You want flat surfaces. But kind of like an onion, cabbage is layered, right? Kind of got some fun stuff going on there. Basically, you got some stuff already cut for you. So we're just gonna swack this sucker in half. Do a little triangle cut. Take out that stem. Drop it on its side. Already layered like so, or flat surface. Just gonna keep turning my cabbage. I want thin, super thin for the cabbage. And I want small. Bow! All right, so we got our slaw all chopped up, jammed in there. Cool little trick to chop in the cabbage. I hope you can use that. Um, now we're gonna dive into some dressing here. We're not gonna do our typical mayo-based salad dressing with vinegar, salt, pepper, kind of kiss of sugar thing. We're gonna do like a citrus version, something a little bit healthier, because what are we doing? We're recipe rescuing, I think we're calling it now. Ah, anyways, so this one we're gonna, for the base, we're gonna have two tablespoons uh, cider vinegar there. We're gonna get our citrus. Uh, juiced, squeezed uh, lemon earlier. So we're gonna add almost all of that. We're gonna save a little bit for our mayonnaise or our aioli for the tartar sauce. All right, the salt keeps going in. And we're looking good. Oh yeah, honey. Just some honey. A little bit of olive oil. All right. So I'm just gonna whisk that all together. The trick to this is you kind of want to beat up your cabbage a little bit. Heat up, I mean, just kind of get your hands in there. I got gloves on. You don't have to have gloves, you got clean paws. But get in there, kind of beat it up. You want to kind of smash it around. It's not going to kind of penetrate the cabbage unless you kind of do this trick and kind of get it in there. Especially if you're doing it the day of. If you're going to let this sit overnight, I understand. You can kind of let it do its thing. It'll break down the cabbage easy peasy. But we're using this in a couple mayonnaise couple. earlier. I'm just going to quick walk you through that. Simple mayonnaise, pretty much six ingredients. A little salt and peep, um, Dijon mustard, lemon, uh, egg yolk, and olive oil and canola oil blend. You can buy totally for this application. We're just going to use this for the finishing for um, our, recipe, our recipe rehab of the tilapia seared. We're going to use it like an aioli kind of over the top. Um, so we pulled out some of that, and we're going to show you a really cool trick for garnishing that later on. 
Um, and then we're going to take the rest of that and we're going to use it for our tartar sauce base. But like I was saying, you can buy something super healthy like an aioli. Um, you can buy these things gluten free. There's all sorts of crazy stuff out. Do what you want. Stick with what you like. If you're a Hellman, you know, certain people are just crazy about their mayonnaise. Stick with it if that's what you're into. If you want a healthier spin, make it. If you want an even healthier spin, buy it organic and crazy made up. Okay. So what we got is we got ours made up. Boom. Deliciousness. This is a really cool trick. We're going to use it for later. Uh, right now we're just going to kind of pull it out and set it aside. Uh, it's like a, if you don't have a piping bag and you're not you know, squeezed bottle and you're not a, a sous chef or, or chef or somebody in the industry, this is kind of just a cool little way to cheat it. So we're going to add just enough to kind of kiss the top of this recipe with. And we're just going to throw this in the fridge for now. And then right before we garnish, we're just going to cut off a tip of this just ever so slightly, just enough to kind of get it piping out. Super easy. You're all done. Easy cleanup. Slap that sucker right in the trash. Oh, all right. So moving on. Tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Awesome sauce. You can buy relish. You can go freaking crazy. You can go to the grocery store during COVID craziness and, and get awkward in the aisle and grab super spicy pickles. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with this. This is super fun. Own it. Okay. I'm gonna own mine. I like big old beastie chopped, or uh, capers chopped up in there. I like pickles straight up chopped in there, not the relish types. So we're gonna add some of that. Boom. All right, I got dill here. We're gonna give a little schwack to that. So we got a little dill, we got a little caper. Just gonna give a kiss of those. I'm gonna give just an extra little skosh of love in there too with some mustard. I know, do your thing, I'm doing my thing. I'll squirrel it out, it's cool. Yeah, funny little story about fish fries as I'm kind of rocking this out. We actually started out when me and the wife first met going to a fish fry at like the church kind of staple here. If you have not been to a church fish fry, they're pretty sweet. You get tatered in line with beers while you're waiting to get to your table. Your table is literally a picnic table, family style. They just slap down giant plates of everything and you kind of just dive right in. Um, with that being said, our first one, me and the wife go to dive right in. Matt takes like three, four slices or pieces of fish, slaps them on his plate, not realizing everybody at the table's got to eat at it. And then as soon as he does realize that everybody's got to pull from that same platter of fish, he throws one right on his wife's plate. That was pretty good. Anyways, my introduction to fish fries. From Michigan, so I had a little bit of a learning curve. All right, so that guy's cranking out there. Got our whisk back from earlier. So, gonna give that a little toss around. We got tartar, folks. Like I said, you can buy this. You can totally have fun with it like I did and make your own. Um, do your thing. All right, super easy recipe though. Mayonnaise, tartar sauce is rocked out. Oh, got a kiss of salt and pepper. We're just gonna get that in there. All right, well, we're letting that just kind of do its thing. I'm gonna show you this really cool trick. We got two different types of fish from earlier. Boom, we got our cod. That's gonna be awesome. Center cut, and then we got our batter for that. Okay, that we're just using, like I said before, Drake's, a little PBR. Wisconsin style homegrown. That's a cool brewery tour if you have not been to. Great story with that company. Kind of cool tour. All right, so once you get a batter, we're not gonna do a, a dry to a, a, a liquid on this. Um, we're literally just gonna do straight from fish to dipped in batter to fry cast iron. Cast iron's heating up. This batter is gonna be thick, all right? Everybody's gonna do fish fries different. They're probably like cursing me right now. Some Michiganders telling them how to make fish fries. Um, been in here longer than any other state, folks. Wisconsin's home. Sorry to say it. Like me or not, I'm here. Okay. The trick that I've learned with fish fry though is it's dry fish. Okay. You, you can let your. Sometimes a lot of restaurants leave and just kind of put towels down. It's kind of what I did. I got a towel down here. This is my tilapia. I kind of show you what I'm talking about. You want a super dry fish. You want to get that water out of there. It's like sponges. It's like your potatoes. It's like mashed potatoes. Super cool trick, just like our potatoes, we've parboiled or boiled these suckers off. We've let them air dry so much that the water's drained absolutely out of them. They're like sponges. Same with that fish. You got all that water, that salty out of there. Now you just got nothing but dry fish ready to take on batter and Cajun cornmeal and crust and stuff like that. It's a dry surface, just like searing meats, you want a dry surface. Any other thing, you want stuff to stick to this, you want it to be dry. All right, so we got dry. Awesome fish ready to roll for that. So that's our Cajun tilapia, that's ready to rock. Um, finishing up our batter here, like I was saying, we want this to be really thick and I think we're there. We're gonna get some of those clumps out of there. Just simple, simple, simple beer batter. 
I like Drake's. You can make your own batter, just like tartar sauce. You can be super snoidy, toity. Um, I, I decided to stick with making the tartar sauce, buying the batter. Cut, get fed here pretty quick. All right, man, that is thick and awesome. If it gets a little too runny on you, obviously whisk in some more batter. If it gets too thick and you need to keep adding, keep adding booze, baby. All right, so we're gonna get that frying. Well, that's frying. We'll start taking care of our slab here. Oh yeah, this tater's lovely. God, scrolling around, man. I get all excited. This shit happens. Fun, fun recipe. Okay, so literally boiled potatoes, right? You can mash those. They're peeled. You can mash them with the skins on. You can do all sorts of applications. We're gonna smash them, okay? Get on some gloves. Get this posse moving here. Try not to be too loud with this. We got a little young strips here sleeping. Um, so we're gonna try to keep it easy, but you can go crazy. That's a fun one to let the kids in there just be around bunches and you're out of Smash the potatoes, okay? So you're literally just gonna smash it, boom. Like I said, you can go crazy on that. We got a kiddo sleeping, we're not. And then kind of just loosely back one on your tray. You don't have to get crazy on this. This is a really, really fun, easy dish. Fun, easy dish. Another way we kind of helped up this dish or recipe rescued it, if you will. Um, we get requests, but I kind of always want to do a little healthy spin, make you think about what you're putting into your bod. And this is kind of one of them. So, you know, like normally you do fried taters with this, baked taters, sour cream, all sorts of stuff smothered and smattered all over it. Um, all sorts of different stuff you could literally do for this as a side. Um, but my wife, when we were talking, actually asked, said, let's do smashed potatoes. I love those, super healthy, super easy. Let's do it. Once again, if you're trying to crank something out fast and you're spending a little time in one area of a recipe, this frees you up to have a little bit of time to play and get those other things done. All right, so that's it. So you smash your taters, right? Oh, that was really easy, lovely. Wow, that was really cool. Yep, yep, squirrel's doing it. Boom, olive oil. Just give it a drizzle across there. Okay, kiss the salt and pepper. Crazy, right? That's it, okay? When that comes out about halfway through, I'll actually give them a stir because I want them to crisp. If they're not crisp enough, I'm actually going to hit a broiler to them. They'll take about 40 minutes in there to kind of crisp up. So we're going to let them do their thing while we do our thing. This video's not going to be 40 minutes though. We'll, we'll, we'll kitchen, television kitchen this for you real quick. All right, so those suckers go in, boom. Thanks. We're going to crank on some fish now. All right, so we got the uh, Cajun seasoning, literally just cornmeal. Cajun seasoning, you can buy it, you can make it, it can be a spicy blend unspicy, mild spice, whatever you want to jam on. We're going to do a little bit spicy there going on. All right, we're just going to do a dry smash into this. Spread it on the plate. Give it a nice, just kind of coat the outside. Cover all the surfaces you can. Really kind of push it into the cornmeal. You want as much of that sticking without using a binder. So we're kind of just using our own little force to get it in there. And you could do these whole if you're cranking on the family, they come all. Well, you don't have to cut them. I cut them just because I want to do something fun with the plating and make it kind of fun there. But if you just want to slap these down, throw them in a pan, get on with your life, I understand. We're going to kind of get some elevation going on by having them in half pieces like this and have some fun. Boom. All right, so we got that ready. We got our cob ready. Super hot cast iron. If you don't work cast iron a lot, that thing takes forever to warm up. Well, I'm sure you probably know that even if you got to let your fryer warm up or whatever you're doing, you're frying in. Um, we're doing the cast iron love straight from cod into wet batter. We're gonna fry this sucker. Fish coated in the batter. I'm just gonna make sure she's coated on all sides, shake off some excess, make sure your pan's hot enough. Hot oil, drop her in, start frying. Get enough oil in there. If you, if you can submerge them, great. If you can't, kind of keep an eye on that. You obviously don't want a soggy top piece hanging out there. So don't be like Sodom, soggy bottoms or tops, peeps. Mm. Yeah. Not oil for that guy. He's totally dunked under. Might just have to give that one guy a flip. But keep an eye on those suckers. You want to cook these through for probably a three, three minute. Depends on how long you brown them. If you have a sheet tray, you want to finish them in the oven. If you fry them too fast, you can do that. Um, you can even do the bake style of the cod if you want. Just not the biggest fan of it. I feel like I need a little bit more flavor. That's why I do the tilapia with Cajun crust. Anywho, everybody's different. This is, like I said, a nice little spin on it. So we got the naughty and nice going. We got our naughty just frying up, looking awesome. Let's do the same to the other. Boom, a little oil in the pan. Make sure that sucker's cranking. We're gonna get that guy hot. Take a look at your sputters again. If you gotta give them a toss, now's the time. 
I added my rosemary, I got my herbs in there, they're looking awesome. Fish is frying, man. We are on full tilt, people, full tilt. Those are gonna be awesome. Love smashed taters, okay. This pan's looking pretty hot, and once again, just like that sizzle, we wanna hear a sizzle in there. Start with my fatty pieces first. We got sizzle, folks. All right, these guys, the those are cranking, and they do their thing. Make sure that guy is telling you about before he gets flipped. Give a little color on all sides. Obviously, if it's totally submerged, you don't have to worry about this. Just make sure you're not sticking in the bottom of your fry basket or whatever. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. We're cooking full steam. All right, we got that set up. We're draining off our excess grease. And get these guys in the center. And take the longest, get my skinnier pieces on the outside there. Fill the pans, folks, fill the pans. We're gonna get through this quick. It's like the squirrel says, man, get you back to eating. We got bodies to feed, right? Man, that just sounds awesome. It's kind of a little treat if you're like the rest of us cooped up in your house. You know, there's a lot of people jealous right now checking out the fish fry. Oh yeah, baby. All right, these aren't gonna take long either. You can see just from a little bit going we got, they're starting to color on the sides there. So they're probably about a two and a half minute. That's why I dove into my cod first. Okay, so the recipe we have naughty. Nice, it's gonna be awesome. Let's turn this guy down. Looking good. Take a little peep at our sputters there. Give our can a spin. Definitely getting some color. And speed up that production. Like I said, you can always pop it off bake and slap it on the boil for a couple seconds. See smoke billowing out of your oven, you're probably burning the crap out of them. So this is a good point to turn on your light. Keep an eye on them, folks. All right. Get those flat, you flip. The center guys are looking good. Boom. 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 All right, man, we got color. We're cranking. We're looking good. They're doing their thing. Fish is frying like crazy, man. We're probably there. We're looking pretty darn good. We give them one last flip. Let this bottom hit. Make sure we're getting all the way through on those. As you can see, golden brown and delicious, man. Straight up, breading, sticking, everything about a good fish fry is happening there. Um, like I said, this is my version. Do your thing. If you can do a healthy spin on it, awesome. Even better. My body seems to fire better on clean fuel. Just the way it works. I always joke, but we go out to eat and the wife will get like a, an entree and I'll get a salad and the waitress will inevitably, waitress, waiter, whoever will inevitably come and set the food for my wife in front of me and then set my food in front of my wife and we had this weird awkward moment. I was just born on healthy food. My mom raised this. So I crave, you know, like when my wife craves fish fry, I crave salad. But anywho, we're all different, right? I definitely am raising my daughter to crave healthier food though. So if you can, Cut out a little meat and get a little bit help. Let's do that. All right, we're good. We're gonna shut that sucker down and get him out of the grease. They are on full tilt. We're gonna turn them down. We're browning like crazy in the oven. We're gonna be plating literally in two seconds. Oh my God, I don't know, but we might have skipped lunch setting up for this. So we might be really, really hungry. So this is freaking awesome right now. I don't know how you do in your house, but it gets a little crazy. Quarantine craziness. All right, that is done. Tartar sauce is raw. This is frying. I'm going to keep those in the pan. Let them stay warm. I'm just going to shut it off. So then I'm going to finish doing their thing. Let's just make sure they're not burning on the other side. Oh yeah, we got a little bit extra color on there. So we're going to let them crisp up on this other side. Man, these are going to be so good. You could even at this point just pop that in the oven, pull those out while those are doing their thing. You're trying to crank that out. There's enough residual heat in that pan that it's going to finish doing this thing. Pretty sweet. Okay, let's get the plate in these beasts. We're not gonna get super fancy on the tartar sauce one. Come on, folks, right? I got tartar sauce, I do. Okay, so fish and chips, right? We can't go wrong. Boom. Spuds, okay. I told you how easy these were. Super easy, right? They're a little starchier than your Idaho, so they got a little bit more flavor. They got all that color, man, just from the oven, a little bit of olive oil, and the rosemary, salt, and pepper, those are gonna pop, right? So you get a little side dish. Boom. And then no joke, this is literally, I'll be in the wife would eat. She's gonna kill me for saying this. She's gonna shove that camera somewhere. 
But uh, I would totally be sitting down with like this tilapia on top of some slaw and she'd be getting a fish fry with like nacho cheese dipping sauce or something crazy going, you're killing me, Smalls. All right, boom. We're playing with our hands too, don't get scared, folks. I mean, I don't know, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. I mean, I'm just gonna say straight up. Fish fry. Love it. Okay. Fish fry. Fun. Let's have some fun with this other guy. Oh, this other guy. We're gonna get all fancy. Okay. Same components. Healthy spuds. Revamped slaw. Healthier slaw. We got the aioli in the fridge. This is a cool trick. This is gonna be super sweet. If you're single, this is hopefully gonna get you closer to it. You can kind of do the coleslaw however you want. It's a little crazy. Hey, yeah, I'm using my hands. Okay. All right, get that fish out of there. We're gonna slap that on top. We got a little of that dill left over. We got a little channel zester there. We're gonna slap some fish on or uh, lemon on the top there. All right. Check this out. This is pretty cool. Oh snap! Yeah, 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 yeah. I found myself all sidetracked getting squirrely with you guys. That's so what I was telling you earlier. Super cool. We're going to get this on now because we don't want to hit our fish. So just going to cut the tip of that off. Keep your stuff in the center of the plate as best you can. Okay. Throw your tip out. Don't serve your customer the tip. Not cool. I mean, dude, super easy, super cool. Tyler, we're just going to get that little kiss. Get that up. Get your fish. Set that on top like so. Get this other little skinny guy. He's gonna bow a little bit more of the skinny guy. He's kind of cool on top. He's kind of gonna give you just that extra height elevation. Dude, how super cool is that, right? And then like I was saying, you got this little bit of leftover lemon jam on hanging out here. You're just gonna give a little kiss of that too. Knock it off. Knock it off, you just want the yellow. Don't want the white. Oh, my friend, you are looking super styling right now if you are the man or the woman. Look at that, huh? Super play to go crazy on it, have fun with this. We rehabbed it, we did fish fry. We got some requests filled. We did a little squirrel spin on it, made it a little healthier for you. You're off a bike ride, you're probably gonna jam that in your system and have a little bit healthier time with it. You don't want to get bogged down too much. You want the fish fry? Do it. Naughty and nice, folks. Naughty and nice. This is Squirrel here. Keep sending me ideas. We're going to keep cranking. We're not going anywhere for another whatever, how many days. Okay. Love my Trek peeps. Love my family out there. Be safe. Stay happy.